Yo everyone, Dance Central here and welcome to episode 2 of Dance Central's Topic of the Week. Now, I know it's Saturday the 25th of July today, so although I'm still within the following week from the last episode, I am on the tail end, so I did consider uploading this at the start of next week so you've got all week to watch this, but then I'd be, technically I'd be leaving a week with no episode so it might be a Saturday as opposed to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of this week but at least it's still this week and if I upload it today it might be a bit late into the week but at least it still counts as an episode every single week and haven't missed a week so that's my justification for that. So episode two then of Dance Central Topic of the Week. This week's topic is going to be on repros so reproductions. So what are repros? Well basically repros are where a game is taken that was only released on a certain system and made available on another system that it was never originally intended for. It's basically taken and then adapted in some way um, other than what it was originally intended for. Uh, another thing that, that repros do is they can take uh, a hack or a ROM that was only ever released online and never on a home platform and they can, um, through very talented people, they um, are able to get that onto a cart or onto a disc and enable other people to play that that had only ever been available online only in the past, now would make it available to be playable on a home console. Um, so, I mean, what do you guys think of repros? Personally, I'll be honest, I didn't know anything about them until a couple of months ago. I hadn't a clue what they were, I'd never heard of them. When I first heard the word, I was still like, well, what's that? You know, still wasn't really that fussed. Um, and it wasn't until I started doing a bit more research myself, looking into it, that I realised exactly what they were about. And lo and behold, a couple of months later, I now own quite a fair amount of repros now. I went on a bit of a spending spree, should we say, um, rightly or wrongly, got a bit carried away. Um, mainly because there's so many Sonic the Hedgehog hacks, for example, that I absolutely loved, um, that, you know, the, the idea of being able to play it now on a home console was just too exciting to pass up. So I do own quite a few now. I mean, for me, you know, if they ever make a new Sonic game nowadays, obviously it's not going to be in 2D. It's going to be 3D, they're going to be using the, te you know, using the technology that's out now, they're going to be trying to push it to its absolute limit, trying to create a visually stunning, um, you know, and all new, um, impressive looking Sonic game. You're not going to get a brand new Sonic game come out now that, you know, is for the Mega Drive or, you know, the Mars system, you know, because they just wouldn't do that because, you know, technology is going forwards and that would be going backwards. So, if you want a new, a new, new game that's Sonic related that you've never played before, then for me personally, I think hacks are the way to go um, because it makes the Sonic game different and new I use that term loosely um, but yeah you can still play it potentially you know if it's been put into a cartridge you can play it on a Mega Drive or you can play it on a Mars system and I love that because it's still all, it's still all different to me the level designs that I've never seen before yeah they're fan made but they're not like the originals so it's for me it's, it's classed as new in my opinion um, you know for example I managed to get hold of a of a repro of Sonic Triple Trouble, which is only ever released exclusively to Game Gear, and I can now play it on my Mars system because someone very cleverly managed to port it over from the Game Gear to the Mars system. So, so yeah, I think that's great. Um, so whether it's a game that was only ever intended on one system and has now been made to play on a different system, or if it's a case of you know a ROM or a hack that's only ever been released online to play on emulation and now someone's been able to get it onto a home console you know either way I'm, I'm all for it you know I own quite a few now I, yeah I must own about I don't know five or six maybe even seven um, you know Sonic repros now that um you know have only ever been released either online only or on a on a certain system and I've now got it to play on another system um, so yeah personally I love it some people say, you know, it's it's not a good idea because it doesn't feel legitimate, it doesn't feel official. I know a lot of people out there prefer the official original stuff. They don't like things being tampered with and it's just, uh, yeah, it's not genuine, so it's, it's not good. Well, I disagree, uh, personally, because again, 
you know, if you're, for example, again, if you're if you're also a massive Sonic fan, you know, you play Sonic 1, 2 and 3, or Sonic and Knuckles, for example, um, over and over and over again, and that's fantastic. It really is. But then if you can get hold of a fan-made hack where they've changed all the levels, you know, changed all the designs, and just made it look really, really impressive, um, and completely different, surely you're going to want to play that. Surely it's going to look exciting to you. So, for me personally, I love them. But guys, what are your opinions? If you've got any repros, what ones do you have? Are there any that you're after that you don't have yet that you're looking to acquire? Do you, do you, do you like them or do you not? Let me know in the comments section below. So this week's episode, repros, do you like them or do you not? Let me know in the comments section below and I'll see you next week for the next episode of Dan Central's Topic of the Week. Take it easy.